examples of that later. But if I were to define my own init method, then all of a sudden everything in main.m would stop working because I did not initialize those students. So always initial, even if you know you're inheriting from NS object, still initialize it. Even if it's because someone later on coming around reading your code is going to be like, wait, this isn't initialized. Now they have to go check to make sure that it, the initialization isn't actually going to do anything. It's always initialize. Is there one last? OK. Any other questions? OK. Then come here. OK. So synthesize. Uh, this is what in the past was used to do exactly what you just said about getting rid of the getters and setters. So what, let's look at student four. So we have gotten rid of the explicit declarations of the setters and getters from here deleted them. They were redundant to begin with. And in student or student.m, we have now gotten rid of the implementations of those things. In the past, you used to need to do like an at synthesize age equals underscore age messiness. Uh, the reason for that is because the compiler didn't used to be smart enough to recognize that if there's a property in here, then it should automatically be in here. Uh, now it is smart enough. So now the property is enough to say that we want an instance variable called, well, actually, using the defaults, and this is, again, why we come back to underscore, the defaults of this line is we want an instance variable called underscore age that has a setter called set age and a, setter, a getter called age. And that setter and getter is going to be implemented using these or these particular semantics, but you don't have to worry about assign and non-atomic yet. Uh, this also means that before, uh, even though we had set, even though we had said assign and non-atomic and read-write, you are allowed to overwrite those. And so, before in the previous example, when we had explicitly defined set age, set age was not necessarily following these semantics. It happened to be because that's how we implement it. We didn't implement it. We didn't implement it caring about whether it was multi-threaded and all that stuff. So you are allowed to override these behaviors. I actually think student five might go into that. So student five, looking at student.h. Again, we still have age and name. Now in student.m, we still do not synthesize, but we just happen to decide to overwrite the set name method. Uh, this was <laughs> David's example of uh, if the name happens to be David, then change it to dummy. Otherwise, do the original behavior. So here we have overwritten what the default setting would do if we just did copy non atomic. But if we also decide that we wanted to uh, we decided that we wanted to override the getter and say return name, now because of the way things are, we do need to expli explicitly synthesize. So now we would need to say synthesize name equals name. And those should go away. Uh, it's only if you happen to be overwriting both the getter and the setter that we need to synthesize the variable again. 
Otherwise, it wouldn't know that this underscore name variable exists. This behavior is because of some backwards compatibility issues, but it's the way it is. Well, that's if you use property and you, you say rewrite. If it is a read-write property, the getters, getters and setters are automatically defined before you unless you decide to override them. And if you override them both, then you need to synthesize again. Because otherwise, it doesn't know about that instance variable. Because like looking at student.h, we see property age and property name. We don't see anything about underscore age and underscore name. And that's part of the reason why we need to synthesize. It's messy, but rarely are you going to be overwriting both the getter and the setter anyway. You might be overwriting them in, if you are like, trying to debug something and you add an NS log to both the getter and the setter. In which case, remember that now you're going to need to synthesize or else it'll yell you. Questions? Yeah. See, if, well, if I get rid of this line, now I'm going to get a bunch of errors. If I now get rid of this setter, I don't have any errors anymore. Because as long as I only override one of them, it's fine. Uh, it's also important just to recognize synthesize because you're going to see it in a lot of prior examples. Like a lot of online things you find will use synthesize. Because it's a relatively new thing that you don't need to use it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so init methods. So up till now, we just used init. Remember, you should always initialize something, but you don't need to initialize it with just init. Uh, you can define your own initialization methods. And if you look at, well, when you're actually doing iOS, you're going to be dealing with a bunch of other initialization methods. But the convention is that the initialization methods are always going to start with lowercase init. And then, the so reading this method, we have a instance method, because it's a dash. It's going to return an ID. So this is also convention. We know that it is necessarily returning a student star. And remember that ID is just sort of like a catch-all for all objects. Uh, the convention for initialization methods is that they return ID. Uh, then the, this is pretty much the convention, too, that we have init with name colon, and we pass it the name. And notice now we are passing a second argument, so space and age colon age. So the name of this method is init with name colon and age colon. That name and age are arguments. Those are not part of the name of the method. So we already see how these names can get pretty long. <laughs> Believe me when I say that there are method names that are like four times longer than this in iOS dealings that you will be using. Uh, so there's one other, I don't remember, questions. <laughs> Yes, it's very similar to void star, except it's dealing with objects instead of general pointers. And we'll see ID in other places, too. And it's also similar to void star in that automatic casting happens. This whole thing? OK. So we have instance method. Uh, the, it is returning an ID. So that's just the way it is. If you wanted, you could say student star. But you shouldn't. You should say ID, because any initialization method pretty much returns ID. Then the convention is that you're going to init. And then with is also pretty much the convention. The Any colon, you can count the colons to determine the number of arguments to a function. So here we see two colons. That means we know there are going to be two arguments. The first argument is called name, and is of type ns string star. The second argument is called age and is of type int. So when we want to actually call this function, we might say, like, well, first we allocate a student. And then we say student 
init with name colon at Bob space and age colon 21. And we'll see an example of that in another student's four or five or whatever. So the answer is no, but that should never be the case. Because if the variables are different, this naming scheme should be different. This is how you name methods in like, it, all method names are very long and explicit in Objective-C. And so if we decided that instead we wanted to just initialize with the name, then we would have an init with name method without the and age. If we wanted to just do name, we would have an init with age method without the and name or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that was a typo. 